Dan and your welcome to another week on Live at Three. Well, Mr. Davis is on a week off. So we're delighted to welcome back Radio One's morning man, John Creedon. Thank you, Thelma. Good to be back. And in turn, let me welcome our studio audience from Mullinahone County. A request for Mrs. Annie McAllister, who lives in Belfast, and this is on her 88th birthday. Happy birthday to you, Annie, and lots of love to you from your son, Joe, your daughter-in-law in Galway, and the rest of your family in Belfast, Australia, and the USA. <laughs> Congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Porter of Waterside in Londonderry, who are 61 years married today. Well, congratulations to you both, and wishing you many, many more happy years together, with love from all your friends and family. Now, Bill and Doris, they send birthday greetings to their Aunt Harriet, who celebrated her 97th birthday on November the 9th. Lots of love from them, both to you, Aunt Harriet. This is Mary Mooney of Portan, Clonee, County Meath, will be 96 on Thursday next. So your family, friends and neighbours all send you their best wishes. And they say, Mary, and congratulations to you because this is a very, very special day for you. Happy birthday to a wonderful grandmother, Mrs. Nora O'Leary of Main Street, Lismore, County Waterford, on her 96th birthday. And Nora, you will be doing a lot of celebrating on Thursday. And this request comes from your loving grandchildren and great-grandchildren in Rathmore. Now I'd like to wish a speedy recovery to Etta McNally of Bognor Terrace, Portadown. And this wish comes with love from all your family, Etta, including your eight grandchildren. And happy birthday to Mr. Donald Gallagher of Dargal Valley Nursing Home, who was 96 on Saturday last. Best wishes to you, Donald, from Sister Peter and all the nuns of Kylemore Abbey. So I'd say there's lots of prayers going there for you to keep you in good health. And finally, happy 84th birthday to Margaret Johnson of Robin Hood Road, Clondalkin. Lots of love to you, Margaret, from your daughter, Bernie, in Kill, and your sons, Luke, Liam, and Philip. And now we had a lot of letters this week asking us for songs that brought back a lot of memories, songs from the musical 42nd Street. So Eat and I put our heads together and we pulled out one of our favourites from that show, Lullaby of Broadway. So on the piano, of course, Eta Flynn. <laughs> along and listen to the lullaby of Broadway, the hip parade and ballyhoo, the lullaby of Broadway, the rumble of the subway train, the rattle of the taxis, the daffodils who entertain, had Angelos and Maxis when a Broadway baby says goodnight, it's early in the morning. Manhattan babies don't sleep tight until the dawn. Good night, baby. Good night, the milkman's on his way. Sleep tight, baby. Sleep tight, let's call it a day. This and that, you'll hear a daddy saying, and baby goes home to her flat to sleep all day. Good night, baby. Good night, the milkman's on his way. Sleep tight, baby. Sleep. Let's call it a day. Listen to the lullaby of old Broadway. Of old Broadway. Now we're swinging 
A little jazz and razzmatazz from Anne Andromita there. Well, coming up after the break, we have crafts, we have chat with our studio audience, and music as well, so don't go too far away. Honestly, they're sisters. They look so alike. No, I think they're just friends. The one on the left is more... More what? I don't know. There's something about her. Her secret is oil of Yule. It's like the skin's natural fluids. So, it's absorbed quickly to help bring out the skin's natural beauty. Oil of Yule. You're as young as they see you. Mummy, have you seen how that man's looking at you? For decades, families have enjoyed the great nourishing taste of Bird's Custard. Today, Bird's Custard tastes just as good and comes in a handy new pack you can pop in your microwave. Bird's Custard. After all, you do want the best, don't you? For comfort from your cold, take Lemsip. There are masses of magic moments in every box of Quality Street. This has been just one of them. We've been sharing. It takes time to prepare delicious food. Menu Master takes that time and gives you freedom. Enjoy tasting spaghetti bolognese. Authentic chicken curry. And traditional beef platter. Menu Master gives you freedom to enjoy good food and your life. Menu Master. Thanks, Anne. Gosh, I'm telling you, Aileen Hayden is uh, very talented indeed. But I heard a lot of complaints from the audience. They were saying... We're an awful lot of us are grannies, and we don't look like that. <laughs> but they, <laughs> those little grannies for the tree are the more traditional granny, aren't they? Uh, Brenda O'Dwyer, you're a grandmother yourself. Yes. Rita, yes. you don't look like that at all. <laughs> Very glamorous, I have Three to say. Three grandchildren. Three. Yes. Well, you wanted to tell me a little bit about employment in Mullinahone, because there's, uh, you know, a, a, a feeling abroad that things are sort of dying in the country and... and, yes. and well, Work is not abundant. But what yeah. is the situation in your area? Well, Monahone Co-op is the oldest co-op in the country, but it's not the longest established. But all the rest of the co-ops have amalgamated, but Monahone has remained on its own. And uh, in 1985, they started a cheese factory. Hmm. And they make cottage cheese, which is considered a health food. They sell a lot of it in their own supermarkets, and they export a lot of it to the UK. They also make cream cheese, which they sell in the supermarkets here and export the rest to the UK. At the cheese, they have 12, but in all, they have 26 employed, employed in the Great. creamery because um, they have 60 suppliers and um, they sell some meat to have more and the rest then goes in the cheese. They also have a farmer's co-op store, which they sell all hardware stuff to the farmers, right. and the re they send it to shops all over the county, all over the country. And um, so, good healthy employment down healthy, there. It's yes. a good healthy economy yes. down in Mullinahone. Well, thank you for that. Uh, and um, oh. 
There's Mr. a plastic Jerry, bag Mr. being... Mr. Jerry Barrett, the creamy manager. Oh, for goodness sakes, we didn't know this was happening at all. With his compliments. Well, and in, in 1993, we are celebrating our centenary. Oh, well, and he continued you. success to you all, and thank you very much indeed for that. If Michael was around, I'd give it to him, but I'll just leave it down here for the present. And he wishes to invite the live at Tree team to come to the <laughs> <laughs> be more than welcome. Well, you're very kind if we're down that neck of the woods, we'd be delighted to call. I want to come over here to a lady called uh, Breda Power. And this is a champion brown bread maker. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> now tell me, you were the Tipperary, the South Tipperary winner of the ESB uh, brown bread yes. uh, competition. What makes a brown bread winner? Practice. Practice. <laughs> and how long have you been baking bread? Oh, I would like to tell you now. <laughs> I'd Years. say you must be popular with the children. Ah, uh, sure. I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> Although a lot of them now have, have left home. So does that mean you're just baking for yourself? Just baking for two. For two. Mm. Right. <laughs> you won other competitions too. Oh, what's I did, what's yeah. the secret of your success? What's in there? Perhaps that well, have a, a recipe. Have a recipe. Here Excuse now me. And this is what's in it. Um, three cups of whole meal. That's the light. One cup of Adlam's plain flour. And one teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of bread salt, a teaspoon of honey, a teaspoon of extra starter and egg, and uh, about a half pint of sour milk. Just there's eating and drinking in it, is there? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And I believe you used to, to sew all your own clothing as well? I did. Apart from baking all your own bread. And you make preserves? Oh, lots of them. <laughs> I have nobody to do them for now. <laughs> what about for local sales? I shouldn't be able for that now. No, no. I'm retired. Well, listen, after, after, today, after today, you might have a stream of callers knocking on the door wondering, can they come in for a bit of brown bread? Oh, and what's come. your favourite preserve? What's your favourite jam? Uh, I think raspberry. Raspberry. Delicious. I oh brought one to you. Did you bring one? No. <laughs> I have to restrain myself. And what with the cheese, the, brown the bread, bread, and the jam. No, I'm telling you, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to run around the block three times. <laughs> You're very generous indeed, Brida. Beside you, we've Margaret Morris, yes. no relation, I have to say. Uh, born again across the county borderline, yes, if you like, in, in, in Stonyford. Yes. Now, you are a sister of Eddie Lawler. Yes. I and am. for those of you who can't remember, Eddie was a finalist in our he was year, Entertainer of yes. the Year. And he sang The Man Who the Broke man the Bank at Monte, Bank, Monte oh, no, Great yeah. entertainment. And do you take after him at all? Do you no, do I don't. No, indeed. <laughs> I'm gone away off that, from there for 52 years, just 52 oh, years really, now. Really? So there's lots of changes than where I came from. You worked on the famous Mount Juliet estate. Yes, yes, when I was young. And that's where you met your husband? Yes, in the stables. Oh, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Of course you were looking at the horses. Oh, yes. Oh, hundreds of them. Well, in fact, that estate was very famous for yes, the horses. Do they, do they race them? Well, they do a bit, but not anything like they used in the old major's time, you know. Yes. And they genuinely did have hundreds of horses. Oh, yes, they did. And, of horses. Um, Lady Helen, she had her own stables there in her own colours, red and white and all the stables. I painted that and all oh, outside thanks. and inside. But an interesting thing, when I was reading my notes, I saw that your mother and your two aunts, my two aunts. were lady gardeners. They were there. indeed. And yes. What's the difference between a lady gardener and a gentleman uh, gardener? Well, they used to weed all the flower beds and rose beds oh, and the all that. Oh, the polite jobs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, lovely. They were doing them. And they used to sweep all the leaves in the winter time off of them terraces, you know. Mind you, with the amount of acreage yes. there, I'd say there'd be a, a yes. fierce well, amount. Well, of course, there was others sweeping. as well, but yes. there were three anyway. Oh, they were but they were very good. The McCalmans were great people oh, to work Oh, they were for. very good. Oh, they were oh. great to the workers, to the people. So they were good days. And I believe Marvelous. you used to earwig on all the parties, peep in. And yes. And uh, every Tuesday night we used to go down to the hall, down to the servants' ballroom. And we'd have dances every Tuesday night there. The servants' ballroom? Well, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> and <laughs> Christmas, and both the major and his wife, and their party, they'd come down onto the hall, you know. Super. And we'd see step dancing and all that cracking. So they were good days. Oh, they were good days. <laughs> You're looking well on it. <laughs> well, behind you, 